A single mother gives her son a much sought after doll for his birthday, only to discover that it is possessed by the soul of a serial killer. Child's Play is up next on Inside Movies. Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode of Inside Movies. Uh, my name is George McHale. I am joined by novelist Andrew Buckley, the editor-in-chief of Merck Publishing, Murphy, and writer-illustrator, GMV Kamichuk. Uh, we're continuing our month of horror films. Uh, this week we're doing Child's Play. Um, up next we've got uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street and then Halloween to, to cap it off. Uh, so make sure you come back each week and, uh, and stick with us. Um, let's get into the good. What do we like about Child's Play? The effects were really good for 1988. I was, so I've, I've never seen this before. I've never watched Child's Play or any of the sequels or remakes or the fucking TV show that just came out. None of it. I just knew it was a creepy doll. And that was it. And that was enough for me not to watch it. But um, the effects of the doll of Chucky actually like talking and stuff was really well done. Oh, well, you're welcome, Andrew, because like the sequels are actually really good, if not better. Like the second and third one are, are really solid. So keep going. They're good, but I don't know. Okay. Yeah, well, no. good. Okay. Some things that I'd like to point out. Um, one of my favorite things about this channel is the fan casting in my head of characters from one movie to the next. See previous videos for that. And so I had to make notes to keep this straight. Yeah. Okay, well, Brad Dorf, his portrayal is incredible. But I think that his character in the Chucky doll is, in fact, uh, not killed at the end of the franchise. He is... He escapes and becomes Luther Boggs in the 13th episode of The X-Files, who is also a soul-jumping character. The same actor plays them all. I think those are all intended to be connected. That's why. That's, That's one spread. of my favorite things. Yeah. Didn't realize I had never seen this before. Uh, I uh, grew up on The Bride of Chucky, which was a movie that I loved. And so going into this, I... I absolutely loved it. <laughs> I know it was cheesy. It's definitely the cheesiest of all the movies that we've watched for this month, but I, I absolutely adored it. Um, they went right into the action. I mean, the very first time mom leaves, Chucky hits her friend on the head with a tiny doll-sized hammer and like <laughs> she gets thrown out the window. Like I, I couldn't <laughs> believe how quickly, how quickly it went to zero to 100. Um, and I think that they did a really good job of making use of his size in ways that made him more scary. You know, like like when they're driving in the car and he's underneath like pressing on pedals and shit. Like, you know, you look at a doll and you're like, how how is that going to be scary? Like, they, I think they did a good job of figuring out ways that he could use this tiny body to like really fuck with people. It's a tight little story. Like it's it's all killer, no filler, with a cool concept of like a kid's toy possessed by a serial killer. Like it's simple, but it's like lean and mean and like really effective. And Brad Dwarf is just amazing as Chucky. He's got a great voice and energy. And hearing the demented, crude things that he has to say as this like twisted little good guy doll is fucking cool. It's fun. <laughs> she was a bitch who deserved to die. Why would you say that? Chucky said it. <gasps> On that note, my other best <laughs> thing about the movie is that little kid. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. Like the scene towards the end where he, he locks the door and he leans against it and starts bawling. Like, I believed that. That kid was phenomenal. I mean, for his age, they said he was what, seven, seven in the movie. He definitely seemed to be about that age. In reality, like fucking props. <laughs> uh, I really like the mom, uh, Catherine Hicks. Uh, she's a badass, but she also looks like terrified and she's like incredibly stressed out while she's like protecting her son. I just, I thought she's a great actress. I thought, I thought she killed it. Yeah. And there's a great turn for her when uh, suddenly she knows that it's the doll and she's working hard to like do something about it, which is despite how crazy it sounds. <laughs> I think that was a good, uh, yeah, totally agree with you, George. She's great. The scene of the battery pack falling onto the ground yes. is so well done in that they really just let you see it 
with her. They didn't rush it. They didn't try to make that. They didn't try to make it a huge thing. It was just a, it was like a reality check. And I think that was, that was kind of the crux that made this movie great versus just being a really cheesy movie about a killer doll was that moment of, of realization for her. And I, ugh. I love so much more about this movie than I expected. <laughs> but it was like a nice domino effect of realization because you get uh, Andy realizing it first and then the little, I mean, the doll just, when he's in the uh, police department and the doll's fucking with him, where he's like, say something, say something. He just does the whole little Chucky thing again. And then you're like, oh, poor kid. And then the same thing happens to the mother. And then the same thing happens to the cop. And then the same thing happens to the cop's partner as like a finishing piece. Like it's, it was just a nice little domino effect of, you know, Chucky fucking with people and then suddenly realizing that, oh my God, he is possessed by a serial killer. There was like a peculiar scene where Chucky like falls on the ground and then rolls under the couch. Yep. And if you watch it, I, I, I'm sad to say I rewound it a few times because the physics seemed <laughs> off. If anyone knows, like, was that a shot? I don't know how that shot was done. Was he on a string? Did they pull him in there? Because he lands kind of off, but then rolls under the couch. It was weird. I want to know how they did that. That movie magic. Maybe it was a uh, maybe it was a really strong fan. Just <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. Hey, usually like the, the fan. The that explanation blows. Is the correct answer. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, maybe. Uh, the the practical effects, the animatronics, the the way Chucky looks, just in general, is super cool and and eerie, especially at the end when he's like getting all like burnt up and just kind of moving towards you and stuff. I, I find it unnerving and and it really works. And like nowadays it would have all been done with like CGI mm -hmm. and stuff and and it just doesn't hit as hard. Like when it's real, like there's I don't know, it, it just it feels like it's more possible. Speaking of something quite practical, you should check out George's Kickstarter. <laughs> Yes, uh, thank you, Murphy. Um, right now we have a Kickstarter for it, Cover of Darkness, a hardcover version of it. You get all six issues, the entire first miniseries collected with a beautiful brand new cover by MJ Hiblin. Uh, and also in this Kickstarter, we're offering a, a card game that I created with my daughter. It's a ton of fun. It's fun for all ages. And uh, definitely check us out. There's a link in the description of this video. At the time of this po uh, video being posted, the Kickstarter is not live yet, but you can click the link and sign up to be notified for when it does launch. Uh, with that being said, let's get into the bad. Let's talk about what we didn't like about Child's Play. I have one thing, one single thing on my list, but it's a big thing. It's a doll. You can't be <laughs> a freaking doll. Like, there's so many moments where I'm like, just stamp that thing to death. Like it's it's a it's a doll. It's a doll. It's a magic doll, Andrew. I don't care. It's a doll. It's a magic doll. Have you ever stomped on a magic doll? You find me a magic doll, doll I'll stomp the shit out inside. of that. Thing. I mean, if we can suspend our disbelief that uh uh Pamela Voorhees can do all of those horrible things in the first Friday the thirteenth, we can let Chucky off the hook being made of plastic. I think. Can't we? No. Haven't we seen Cabbage Patch Kids do just those things all the time? It's like a Sour Patch Kid. Yeah. Uh, sour First he's sweet, then he's sour. <laughs> I would say one of my uh, one of my one of my bad things on this is the it's the op the opening scene. The they have the the Ghostbusters lightning and the you know he this guy this guy grabs the doll and just starts chanting. And when I, when I was watching, I was like, this is just so unbelievable. And they do shoehorn in an answer as to how he knew a magic spell. Um, mm. But that, that was definitely the weakest part of it. And then, oh, why am I bleeding? Oh, you're turning human again. Like eh, that, that was weak, <laughs> but I'll let it fly. Yeah. On my list of bad, definitely like. Oh no, it's voodoo magic. Mm, I don't know. You could be better. Well, and the thing is, is that like voodoo is like a real religion for you know for a good amount of people in the world, and so this isn't really done anymore. Like this, like in the '80s, it was everywhere. It was voodoo magic, and like Steven Seagal is like marked for death. It's like voodoo bad guys, and even in the Predator too, they have some voodoo guy in it, and and you know, it's just. 
it's it's a little bit lazy, you know, like it's just you know, just some sort of magical explanation to to put something together. I'd say the only the only other thing that uh that really stuck out to me is in those last those last few scenes. Um I love I love the use of child-sized weapons by Chucky and the child, but a grown ass police officer detective man being knocked out by a kid's bat. <laughs> A magical kid bat. Oh my God. I'm pretty sure the bat was just a child's bat. Oh no, read the liner notes. I'm sure it's a oh. magic bat. Uh, so for me, I also kind of found the movie to be a little tedious in that like they're playing it like a mystery, like who did it? And we all know, like we, we know it's Chucky the whole time and it's like we're just waiting for the other characters to catch up and be in on it and it's like, well, I do appreciate that this movie has a short runtime. I kind of wanted that aspect to like speed up a bit. Um, I will say on that note, one thing, one thing that that stood out to me for all four movies that we watched this month is all of them have a very short runtime. It's it's um, almost all of them were like very straight to the point, um, and we're all in like a tight ninety minutes. And I kind of appreciate that. You don't get a lot of like really good straightforward movies that like still managed to not that this one had a twist but you know the other movies we, we were watching uh, some of them do I, I don't know I enjoyed the short runtime I think 90 minutes is a great length for just like a slasher horror film I completely agree I feel like pretty much most movies should only be 90 minutes long <laughs> um, let's get into the skinny uh, let's give our final grades for Child's Play I'm going to give this one 5 out of 6 uh, killer children's toys, uh, as in bats and toy cars and <laughs> things that you can use to try to kill toys with. I loved it. I'll give it uh, four out of five good guy dolls uh, for evil toy movies, although Puppet Master may give it a run for its money. I'll give it a B plus. Uh, this is a good 80s horror movie, but I also think that it's kind of pretty simple and straightforward so that's why i can't give it like an a or anything crazy like that but i think it's super solid and definitely like worth checking out if you haven't seen it i give it three homicidal voodoo dolls out of five uh, and it, it's i liked it more than i thought but it's it's still a doll i don't care if it's magical I, it's still it's still a doll all right you can kill a doll Craig, you'll like this sequel. You should watch this sequel, There's episode no way. thirteen, season one of the X Files. You'll like. <laughs> they wrap it up really nicely. I've probably seen that. Uh, all right, that's it for another episode of Inside Movies. I've been George McHale, joined by Murphy, <laughs> GMV Kamichuk, and Andrew Buckley. Uh, go and check out my Kickstarter. There's a link in the description of this video. And uh, and follow along with us on our Facebooks, our Instagram, our Twitters. Links to all those in the description of this video as well. Until next time, peace.